real boot hill where they bury the people they've executed or other, and others who die in prison who have no one to claim their bodies. The worst indignity of all, they even took away their names. And I watched my daughter pick up hands full of stones and place them one at a time, markers on each one of those. I knew what she was doing. She was processing. She was processing her own feelings from when they killed her father. If I could stop you, Governor Bush, I would. We have death camps in America. And I'm gonna live to tell it. I'm gonna live to tell it. I'm gonna live to tell it. Death camps in America. For every symbol out here in this very sad place, there are people on the other side whose hearts have been crippled also. And I urge you to find out where the victim groups are in this state. And we've got to share that pain together as human beings so that we can step forward together and solve this. This certainly is part of the moral struggle for all of us. And let's cross the state of Texas and show them our humanity. Thank you. Thank you for those words, yeah. I'm definitely in favor of it. And I think the only tragedy is that people are on death row for 15 years. I believe they should be given one appeal, and if they're still found guilty, they should be executed the next day. Uh, if it was a true deterrent, I, I would be for it. I don't think there's been proof either way. I I'm in favor of it. I mean, I just believe basically in an eye for an eye. I have no problem with it. I mean, I feel like these people didn't give their victims a chance. Leaving the journey today. Yeah, I'm gonna miss you. I miss you too. She has serious separation anxiety. So now that we finally have found our place in each other's lives, she's uh, very afraid to, that something might happen. When Tina was a baby and Eric was nine, he asked me, when will you be home, Mommy? When will you come home? So year after year, I'd say, soon, soon. I'll be home soon. And year after year went by and I didn't come home. And so Tina became angry with me. Eric became angry with God. I was angry because it was broken promises and it, it broke my heart. When she got out, I didn't know if I was going to like her. I was 18 years old. I was still figuring out where I'm going and who I am. And so was she. We had a lot in common and we immediately hit it off. I love my mother with all my heart. She's my best friend. When I look at Tina, in a way I see my own daughter, Christy, and I believe we both feel it, uh, almost a father-daughter relationship. When I can hug Tina and make her laugh, it's almost like I'm hugging Christy and making her laugh. As a father, I can, I, I can only ache at what is done to the children. He's like my father figure. I love George. George is a, he's a good man. See you later, Sonny. Okay. Awesome. You're real careful there, Karen. That valuable property. Hi, I just want you to know that I love all of you, and you are my family, and um, you know my sister. When I met Anne, there were two broken families. Both of us needed help to help us understand why we have this thing called the death penalty, and Anne was trying to find out how in the world can I get rid of it. I just needed to know why do they need to kill my child. Instead, I found they were trying to figure out how they could keep us separated, and kill my child to make her feel better. When my children died, there was absolutely nothing I could do to change it. But if I was in Barbara's shoes, I would be fighting every day just as she is, that they're not just executing one person, that they're torturing a whole family. I keep going because my son is on death row, and I feel that I have to be 
and encouragement to those who are also fighting. And I can't ask people to do for me what I'm not willing to do for myself. You probably noticed, if you haven't yet, that we don't have abolition moving, moving with us today. Uh, but we are a part of abolition movement, and, and, and these vehicles are a part of that caravan. And we have with us smaller versions of Journey of Hope from Violence to Healing <laughs> logos, which we will be affixing to some of the vehicles that we'll be, um, that we'll be doing. I think that going to these restricted uh, speaking engagement where we, we are all on the same side is a waste of time. Let's go into enemy territory. We are a justice-seeking people and we are fighting, fighting for our lives. I wanted Randall to be in Dallas. He was real apprehensive uh, about coming back to Texas, never wanted to come back to Texas again, never wanted to set foot in Dallas. We sued Texas for an apology. No money. I don't want your damn money. Keep it. We sued them for an apology, which I have never gotten. I already got, I got my look of Dallas coming in. And so we pray to you We make mistakes. Here was an innocent man that came within 72 hours to be executed. Now we talk about, oh, let's do away with the appeals. There's too many appeals that a person has. You do away with appeals, Randall Dale Adams wouldn't be here on this journey here in Texas because he'd be a dead man. You may wonder why I move around a lot. I don't like to stand in one place too long. That comes from the many hours of living in an eight by six area with nothing else to do but to read and write letters and think. And believe me, that's a worse punishment than dragging me out of my house, strapping me to a gurney, and letting me ride that dark horse out of here. That's easy, I'm gone. <laughs> Who would allow the state of Texas to knowingly kill an innocent man? How many people in this room with the show of hands would try to stop that execution? Mm -hmm. Then you have to stop the death penalty. They say it's not a deterrent. I think if you're killing the right people, it's a deterrent. Well, they make a very strong statement opposing the death penalty, and I understand that. Two innocent people, that's incomprehensible. I am pro-death, but I think I am because I see so much violence going on. I've come to the point to, that I genuinely believe that the death penalty is wrong. But I was surprised at my reaction when I read about this murder in Jasper. I think that I personally could have gone over there and executed those three without the slightest scruple. Thanks for coming, especially, especially those of you who came really long ways and crossed oceans to get here. We really need you. I was introduced to the idea of coming along to the Journey of Hope by my good friend Trish, who was here two years ago for the last one in Virginia and has talked about nothing else since. Um, and, and all of you people, and we all thought that she had lost her marbles, but now that I'm here I know exactly what she meant, and I've never met um, anyone like any of you before in my life. I really want to thank everybody for, oh gosh, I have to be the first one to break up, don't I? For being really involved, I wish I would have known about all these organizations earlier, and been a part of it, and I really hope that we do some really good work and get this all put away before my brother gets put down. I think they ought to execute all of them. We've got 460 or 460 some odd people on death row. I think they ought to do one a day until they're all done. They don't even need to wait them up. Get it on, get it done with. That's, what I, that's the way I feel. Sometimes it's innocent people, but then sometimes it's guilty people. I figure it evens out. I feel this way, uh, I love my children. But if they commit a crime, then they're going to have to pay for it. And if they take a life, then why should their life be spared? We're just an average family, but we have a son on death row. He's been there for 15 years. He's passed all but one appeal, and if they deny him relief, they will set Larry's date. 